All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for taking the time out to uh, attend this webinar. Um, my name is Penting from the um, Australian Digital Health Agency, um, and the topic of the webinar today is linking the Australian medicines terminology and um, global trade item numbers. Um, and this initiative really is to improve medicines management and safety. Um, before we go on, um, just to let you know, we are doing a recording today. Um, we have also put everyone on mute at the moment. So in terms of questions, um, just type in your questions on the chat at any time. Um, and also, we'll try to answer questions um, as we go along after each section. Um, but also, right at the end of the webinar, we'll put everyone um, um, off mute um, for you to pose any questions. Cool. So the agenda for today's webinar is, um, I'll start with an overview of what the Australian Medicines Terminology, or AMT, is. Um, we'll talk a little bit about um, how does the AMT relate to the supply chain. Um, we'll give you an overview of the initiative to link the AMT CTPP codes with GTINs um, by including this um, data in the National Product Catalog, the NPC. Um, and then finally, we'll talk at a high level what the requirements are for pharmaceutical product suppliers. Um, so the Australian Digital Health Agency was established in 2016 by the governments of Australia um, to lead the development of the National Digital Health Strategy uh, and its implementation. So the agency um, designs and operates national digital health services and sets standards um, so that we can promote Australia's global leadership um, in digital health and innovation. Um, the NCTS, so um, um, I work in the National Clinical Terminology Service or the Clinical Terminology branch of the agency's architecture, design, and strategy division. Um, the NCTS operates as a national release center for SNOMED International um, since the establishment of that organization in 2007. Um, the purpose of our division is to facilitate and support the correct use of national clinical terminologies by healthcare organizations and systems within Australia. Um, we hope um, this is achieved by ensuring terminologies, um, the tools, um, and the professional services that we offer are, are relevant and fit for purpose, um, um, either through direct management um, with other organizations and also international standards bodies. So this slide tells you about a little bit about the National Digital Health Strategy um, which was developed in 2018, uh, mid, mid last year was published by the agency. The strategy is the product of detailed consultation and co-production with patients, uh, consumers and carers, um, and also the healthcare professionals, the industry organizations and all the innovators who serve them. Um, the strategy has drawn on um, a lot of evidence from clinical and economic benefits from many sources, um, both within Australia and overseas. Um, the National Digital Health Strategy um, um, really is a seven-pronged um, approach with seven strategic uh, priorities, as you can see on, on the screen. Um, the first one is My Health Record. Um, second one is Secure Messaging. Um, the third is interoperability and data quality. Uh, medicine safety is next, enhanced models of care, workforce and education, and driving innovation. Um, so the National Digital Health Strategy lays the foundations for a safe, seamless, and secure health system in Australia. Um, as I said, it was developed through extensive consultation with the Australian community and industry. Um, as well as drawn on comprehensive analysis of, of evidence. Um, the, in, in the that National Digital Health Strategy, um, it describes digital information as the bedrock of high quality healthcare. Um, really the benefits of digital means that um, to, to patients are quite compelling. So we try to avoid hospital admissions. We wanna have fewer adverse drug events. We wanna have reduced duplication of tests. 
We want to have better coordination of care for people with chronic and complex conditions, and we definitely want to have better informed tr treatment decisions for our clinicians. Um, and really, at the end of the day, um, we're trying to have digital health there to help save and improve lives. Um, in terms of the strategy, um, proposed with the seven strategic priority outcomes to be achieved by 2022. Um, the outcomes are really there to be delivered not only by the Australian Digital Health Agency, uh, but really programs of work um, that are existing or futures, future work um, that are actually delivered by the actual healthcare industry itself uh, and, and or also collaboration with, with the agency. Um, the adoption of national uh, consistent clinical terminology is core to the realizing a realization of the benefits of many of the digital health strategic priorities um, as agreed by the states and territories of Australia. Um, specifically, um, the, it supports the strategic priorities um, one, three, four, and five. So priority one is my health record where health information that is available whenever and wherever it is needed. Um, priority three is interoperability and data quality. So we want to have high quality data with a commonly understood meaning that can be used with confidence. Um, strategic priority three, uh, four is medicine safety, um, where we want better availability and access to prescriptions and medicines information. And then priority five is enhanced models of care. Um, where we want digitally enabled models of care that drive improved accessibility, quality, safety, and efficiency. So specifically under strategic priority three for high quality data with a commonly understood meaning that can also be used with confidence. Um, the interoperability of clinical data is really quite essential um, to a sustainable healthcare system. This means that Patient data is collected in standard ways and can be shared with everyone really in real time um, between them and their um, healthcare providers. Um, the, it highlights that the adoption, um, this can be achieved through the adoption of national clinical terminologies, unique identifiers and data standards. Um, okay, so before I go on to the next section, um, that talks about an overview of the Australian medicines terminology itself. Has anyone got any questions? I don't see any questions. Type on chat. Um, okay, no worries. I'll um, I'll move on. Um, so an overview of the AMT. So um, before I um, launch into that, um, as well as you know, most people know that there are different medicines reference files um, in use um, in the country. Um, so there will, these will have slightly different names. So these are the text and also um, identifiers within them. So these are the codes within those systems and files. Um, these uh, reference files are created for similar but yet slightly different purposes. So um, often they, 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 they do overlap. And then some key examples obviously include um, the Australian Register of Therapeutic Goods from the TGA. Um, you've got the pharmaceutical benefits schedule data. You have data from pharmacy wholesalers, um, data from various formularies. Um, and then we have proprietary software vendor lists. Um, and then you have also various knowledge databases um, around Australia. So that's a challenge. Um, so the AMT, Australian Medicines Terminology, is a systematically organized machine-readable collection of medicinal terms. Um, it is modeled according to the international terminology called SNOMED CT. Um, it is officially part of the Australian edition of SNOMED CT, called SNOMED CT AU. Um, the AMT um, has got, uh, is for use by both humans and computers. Um, it delivers standard identification of branded medicinal products, um, as well as their equivalent uh, generic um, medicines and other associated components. Um, in the AMT, like any clinical terminology, we seek to represent definitional knowledge. So what that means is 
um, within the AMT, it's medicines attributes about medicines that do not change. So it things that actually define a medicine. Um, and we have standard naming conventions um, around the, the the descriptions and the names for the medicines that are defined by an um, editorial rules, um, which is published. The purpose of the AMT um, is to provide a consistent way to index, store, retrieve, and aggregate clinical data from structured clinical records, so any type of clinical records. Um, it is there to support clinical care by recording statements about the health and the care at an individual patient level. So it's, it, it's really um, very specific um, to the um, patient episode level. Um, and it supports clinical care by also um, um, after the recording, we also want to retrieve some of those statements um, at different levels of abstraction or detail so that we can analyze that data to, um, um, to, get, to get some benefit. Um, it is also critical to the safe exchange of information, so really trying to have less transcription errors, um, and it redu reduces errors and delivers more accurate information. The scope of AMT um, is to include medicines that are available in Australia for treating humans. Um, when we say available, what we mean is it refers to past or current inclusion on the Australian Register of Therapeutic Goods, um, not so much the actual product or market availability for, for those medicines. Um, the medicines addressed within AMT include the registered and listed items, so OSTR and OSTL items um, sourced from the TGA's ARTG. Um, we also include additional PBS and RPBS items, for example, dressings, your diagnostic strips, nutritional supplements, and also standard formula pre preparations um, from the PBS. Um, other medicinal items um, for human use and that is of national relevance when requested by users can also be added. Um, in, into the AMT, so for example, uh, non-approved therapeutics such as special access game products. Um, things that are out of scope of AMT, so um, would include individual specific compounded medications or extemporaneous preparations, um, things like individual chemicals that are used within uh, preparations that are also not registered as actual products within the TGA. Um, things like hospital repacks, clinical trial drugs, veterinary medicines, um, and then foods and nutritionals um, that are non-PBS. Um, blood and blood derivatives are not in scope. Uh, medical devices that are non-PBS or RPBS also not in scope. And then finally, products that are not intended for direct human use are also not in scope. So. Um, this pictorial just gives you a, um, a view of the APEC uh, medication management cycle. Um, so the AMT really supports various cycles um, within um, uh, various steps within this meds management cycle. So the cycle talks about um, a decision to appropriate treatment, and then um, on going to that is decision to prescribe a medicine, you record an order or a prescription, and then you go on to reviewing that order and prescription. Um, and then there's an issue of medicine or a dispense event. Um, you provide the medicine information, and then it goes on to distribution and storage of the medicine, and then you administer that medicine, and followed by monitor the patient for response, and then finally you want to transfer that verified information to other systems. Um, so within this particular cycle, um, the AMT supports the recording of medicine um, order and prescription, the review of it, um, and the issue or, or, or a dispense of the medicine. Um, and then it also supports the administration of medicine step. And then finally, it supports the generic transfer of verified information between systems. This is another high-level use case of the AMT. Um, just gives you another view. Um, in this particular case, it hones in into the community care 
and acute care settings. Um, so um, the AMT supports those yellow uh, highlighted boxes. So a patient goes from community, travels from community into acute care um, on a hospital admission. So the, the AMT supports the medication reconciliation on admission um, step. Um, the patient then um, um, gets prescribed um, some, some medicine. Um, so the medicine order is also supported. And then um, the acute pharmacy then issues um, um, a particular medicine um, and the nurse administers that medicine. So both of those steps are also supported by the description of the medicine within AMT. And then at the end on an inpatient discharge, discharge out of hospital, um, the medication reconciliation on discharge step is also supported. So the patient then travels from um, back into the normal community care settings um, where the prescriber, uh, the, the, the GP, um, will prescribe a particular medicine and the community pharmacy dispenses a medicine. So the prescribe and dispense within the community care settings are also supported by, by AMT. And right in the middle there, the My Health Record system draws all of these together um, and the AMT also supports that particular step. Okay, so let's talk a little bit, delve a little bit more into the AMT proper. Um, so the AMT um, is there to uniquely identify and unambiguously describe a product in a clinical meaningful, clinically meaningful way for healthcare providers. Um, it's been developed using data that's been sourced from um, medicines manufacturers, so product sponsors, um, and also the primary data sources of the TGA and PBS. Um, this particular figure you see in the middle there provides an overview of the AMT relational model. Um, so it just shows you the different levels of information um, for a particular medicine that are captured. So on the left-hand side, we have the medicinal uh, product concept. So these are the generic um, uh, concepts. Um, and then on the right-hand side, you see the trade products or the branded products. So you see these um, uh, branded equivalents um, for, for that particular medicine with different levels of information. The container trade product pack or the CTPP concept right at the bottom, uh, bottom right there um, is the lowest AMT product level um, that you can get. So it's got the most information in the AMT and it relates to a packaged physical product um, that, um, can, um, that is dispensed. Um, and it is at this level that you sh we should be associating with the corresponding product GTIN. And I'll talk a little bit more about this um, in the next um, few slides. So this particular pictorial just gives you, uh, steps you through an example of what it looks like for an amoxyl product. So this, this is an amoxyl 500 milligram capsule 20 blister pack product. Um, so as you can see, um, the branded site, so it's got, it starts from its brand name, amoxyl at the top, amoxyl 500 milligram capsule, which is the unit of use in this case, it's the it's the, um, it's the individual capsule level. Um, as you travel down to trade product pack, you just add on a, a collection of 20 capsules. As you go down to the container trade product pack or the CTPP, you add on a container type of blister pack. Um, and then you move on to the left-hand side, you've got amoxicillin at the top, amoxicillin 500 milligram capsule, amoxicillin 500 milligram capsule 20. So all of these are generic equivalents um, of, of the branded counterparts. And really all these seven uh, concepts um, we release within AMT because they really support um, different um, uh, different clinical events. So you want to describe prescribing uh, a medicine to be prescribed or medicine to be dispensed or administered, um, etc. Okay, so um, I'm not sure if anyone has any questions so far before I move on to the next section. No? Okay, no worries. Um, so how does the AMT relate to the supply chain is this next section. Um, Australia's, Australia's health sector um, 
has really embraced supply chain reform and is already making significant progress towards an interoperable system um, that delivers substantial quality and efficiency benefits for both providers and consumers. Um, you guys would be very um, well versed with um, this particular supply chain flow in terms of um, what, what a life cycle of a product looks like. So it starts from raw materials on the bottom left there. It goes on to the manufacturer, um, the sponsor, and then the regulators, import-export activities, and then warehousing, logistics, wholesale, retail, health services, the storerooms um, within them, um, the actual care providers themselves, the clinicians, and off to the patient itself, and then right at the end, the actual disposal of the product. Um, this particular pictorial, um, and it's actually an interactive one, can be found um, on the link below, below this particular uh, slide, um, and it's actually taken from the agency website. Um, so let's talk about global trade item numbers. So the GTINs um, really play a role in, 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 in everything, in every step of the supply chain, and it is really present across all stages. The Australian medicines terminology uh, would, um, is actually important in many stages there. So it, it, it features in the sponsor, um, regulation, wholesale, retail, health service, the care provider step, and the patient stages of the cycle. Tenders. So the tendering function is present in the sponsor, wholesale, retail, and health service stages of the product cycle. So um, I've really included the tendering because um, um, I'm sure some of you would know some 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 tenders like HPV um, has recently actually asked for um, the inclusion of AMT CTPP codes and their descriptions in 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 their tender applications. So some of you would be um, well aware of that. Um, Product recall. So while product recalls mainly will rely on the GTINs um, as the primary identifier for, um, for 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 the product as it as it travels back uh, backwards from the patient to the raw materials and and manufacturer, um, the AMT itself because it's been used in different clinical systems. Um, um, ac across Australia would actually help in assisting as a secondary um, um, part of um, identifying medicines in this particular process. Um, the National Product Catalogue, so this diagram shows that all in all stages of the cycle, um, the National Product Catalogue is actually present and supports all of this, um, or, or all of the supply chain stages. So why should physical product uh, data and the AMD data be linked together? Well, really, the objective of this work is to deliver sustainable and efficient mechanisms um, to link supply chain uh, physical product data, medicines data, to the data that's used in various clinical systems, which is AMT. So specifically, um, the link to establish the AMT and the um, and GTINs held within the National Product Catalog, um, are both being agency-managed um, initiatives, um, is really there to provide clinical safety benefits such as supporting um, the automated barcode scanning processes um, within pharmacies, um, which is a legal requirement now in, in community pharmacy. Um, it helps to enhance identification tracking of medicines uh, between the supply chain and clinical environments. And in fact, really, we want safe, reliable, and consist consistent transfer of that the med meds information across all points of care. Um, we want to um, have improved product tracking for product recalls, as I said before. We also want to provide a trusted source of available prescribed, dispensed, and administered um, meds information uh, for healthcare professionals and consumers. Um, and finally, the link between the GTINs and AMT also serve to align um, other national medicines data sources, so such as the TGA and PBS, 
so that the provision of sponsors' data is streamlined to all users. So really, the we, the principle of provide once and use many times um, here. Um, the JTIN still provides the uh, the functionality as the primary identifier within product data and the physical marking of the barcoding of products. Um, before I go on to specifically use cases um, for linking AMT and JTINs, any questions? Nope, I don't see any questions on the chat. Okay, no worries. Um, I'll move on to the next section. So in terms of use cases, so there's been... So this work really isn't just within Australia, it's, it's actually international. Um, there has been collaboration between GS1 um, as the international um, organization and, the, and SNOMED International or IHTSDO. Um, and there, there is actually um, a document and a press release um, that you can see by clicking the, the first link there. It describes some of that work at, at the international level. There's been work between GS1 um, and New Zealand as well. So New Zealand has actually um, gone on a couple of years ago to um, to commence this exact initiative um, by linking their NZ ULM um, Library of Medicines um, NZMT really the the medicines terminology for New Zealand with um, with GTINs, um, so you can click on that second link um, to read more about um, GS1 and New Zealand work, and then specifically um, the third link um, talks about some of the proposed use cases for linking SNOMED and GTINs for medicinal products. Um, which is very specific, um, which is exactly what we are trying to achieve here with um, with the AMT and JTINs. So this summary, uh, this slide just gives you a very quick summary of what those use cases are, or or or, 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 or what the um, what they might support in the future. So within Australia, um, there are seven use cases. Um, um, that's been proposed. So use case number one is dispensing of medications. So the Pharmacy Board of Australia has set out mandatory dispensing guidelines um, that pharmacists must use barcode scanners when dispensing medications. Um, so um, it, it, this use case then requires that the current and correct JTIN um, is stored in the dispensing system. So really, um, we need to draw need to have a link between the GTIN and an AMT CTPP identifier um, so that we can reduce dispensing errors. Um, the use case number two is, ad is administration of medications. So this one is really about at the, um, it is the barcode point of care medication safety program. So point of administration to decrease administration errors. Um, use case number three is availability of medications. Um, so this is really about how um, um, this just harks back to the actual product availability. So um, what is actually available um, that can help in the ongoing maintenance of a um, uh, of a local catalog. So to advise when a product is no longer available, for example, uh, validated update process. Um, this is about um, this is when a local catalog is mapped um, um, to different reference files, including the AMT and the NPC. And this link, um, the link between AMT and GTINs, would actually help people to validate across different reference files. Um, analytics. So this is important, given that the rising cost of healthcare and increasing pressure to reduce spending and also to increase efficiency across the sector, um, there's an ongoing need to provide improved analytics, um, both from a spend and a clinical perspective. So an AMT to, to GTIN link um, will enable the clinically relevant analysis of product use and things like effectiveness um, um, to be performed on the um, on standard nomenclature to the link to the of physical products. 
Um, so for example, you can combine this, this with spend analysis through UNSPSC classification um, would uh, help to enable richer analytics um, for health administrators. Um, use case number six for Australia that's been proposed is product data management. So this one is around um, having duplicated data throughout the value chain. Um, so for example, UNSPSC, the National Product Catalog, the AMT and SNOMED CT. Um, in, in terms of, um, again, it's the provide once use many principle. So we can actually um, um, we can actually have um, we can, we actually manage um, um, data uh, the collection of data better over and, and not have so much duplication. Uh, use case number seven finally is the consumer use. So um, with the advent of consumer mobile device applications, um, um, so for example, there is a an NPS medicine wise application within Australia, which enables the consumer to actually scan a GTIN of a product um, and record it um, within the app for their own use or their family's medicine list. So really, um, a link between the AMT and GTIN also then um, gives you the recording um, of that medicine within the My Health record, for example. Um, in New Zealand, um, there are actually four um, uh, proposed use cases. Um, so um, it's the first one is prescribing and dispensing a currently available uh, medication in primary care. Um, similarly, the second one is the prescribing and point of care administration of a currently available medicine in secondary care. Um, and pretty similar with the fourth one where you got prescribed, dispense and point of care and minister of medicines in residential aged care facilities. And then finally, the third one is the management of robotics. So robotic medication packing system operations. Um, there are also a couple of others. So Canada um, has stated that they want this link um, to help them automate vaccines identification to really populate their health records um, or um, the various immuniza immunization registries. Um, I actually haven't written um, included um, information in this particular slide, but the UK has also stated that within the um, uh, link um, between their particular medicines model, um, which is called the DMND, the Dictionary of Medicines and Devices, um, which is the equivalent to the AMT in Australia, uh, a link between their DMND model with, with GTINs would help in uh, four different um, use cases. One is around manufacturer's data entry, so really to help to, um, when the manufacturers enter their data, including mandatory GTIN um, into the GDSN, um, the GS1 GDSN network, the Global Data Synchronization Network, um, they would like that to link into one or more UK product information systems, so clinical information systems, and have that shared across the different um, clinical settings. Um, the other use cases uh, stated by the UK, which is quite similar to New Zealand, is to support primary care prescribing and then secondary care prescribing also. And then finally, the UK lists the use case, num use case number four as adverse event reporting. So really helping to, um, uh, that link can actually help uh, reporting um, um, adverse events. Okay, so I'm not sure if there's any questions at all at this stage. Um, no, that's fine. So, um, so this particular section talks about um, the overview of the actual AMT GTIN mapping initiative that we um, we are going to embark on. Um, so. Um, I did forget to mention right at the beginning that um, this series of webinars, um, well, the webinar today um, gives you a flavor or, or an introduction to the actual um, um, the mapping initiative itself. There will be another um, series of webinars in May um, that's more detailed and that's about talking about um, what the processes are around 
um, the actual detailed processes of, of how you validate some of your data, the CTPP data that we'll be providing to you, and how do you request products and, and, and things like that. So just bear that in mind. Today is the introductory webinar, and then followed by a detailed webinar in May. Um, so let's talk about um, the actual um, initiative to link the physical product data, the GTINs within the NPC, um, and the CTPP data from the AMT. So really, as, I, as we said before in previous slides, um, the single, within physical product data, the single unit or the unit of use um, relates to our TPUU concept, so the trade product unit of use concept. Um, as you go down a, a lower level, you get the base unit or each GTIN level, now this is the level that we want um, that is associated with the AMT CTPP concept, and this is the um, this is the link. This is basically the link that we want to draw between the two sets of data. Um, obviously, as you go down in the in the supply chain world, um, you've got uh, bigger levels of packaging. So you've got your inners or intermediates. Um, you've got your cases, your cartons, your shippers, and then finally you've got pallets. So all of these will have their GTIN or, or the SSCC for pallet. Um, um, these lower levels of packaging, while they exist in the physical product data, they don't really feature within the AMT because it's not, um, I guess those levels are not really uh, useful for, uh, for clinical settings, uh, for recording within clinical settings. Um, on the left hand side, you'll see very quickly, so those yellow boxes, that th those just gives you a, um, a quick definition of the various um, uh, product levels within AMT and why, uh, I guess, why, um, wh wh why they've, been, um, they've been created. Um, so, so the step one um, for the initiative is to draw a link between base unit GTINs and AMT CTPP codes, so base unit GTINs that you have in your in your catalog. Um, the second step is to populate the CTPP codes into your NPC catalogs. So um, at this stage, I'd I, I like to say that not because the AMT container trade product pack code in the NPC uh, is not a mandatory field. You can actually, so if, if, if a product um, is not found within AMT, uh, for, for, for any number of reason, or if the product is a medical device so it's out of scope of AMT, then we don't actually expect um, that particular AMT CTPP field to be, um, to be populated. So the, an empty field is actually okay. Um, so the step three then, once all your relevant CTPP codes, the, the CTPP codes are uploaded onto the NPC catalogs for relevant medicines, so medicines that are in scope of AMT, then this linked data can be accessed uh, by everyone else via the usual GS1 uh, GDSN data synchronization service, um, and also the access to other, uh, at, because it's held within the NPC, then um, people can also access other useful data such as product availability, etc. So that's really, really quite useful for, 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 for people in clinical settings also. And then in terms of access to um, um, the actual GTIN CTPP link data specifically, um, in the future we are going to put in other methods um, for uh, clinical information systems to, um, to access that um, beyond just the normal G um, GDSN network. Um, yep. Um, okay, so I just just actually have a question um, at the moment from Karen. Um, should should there be a CTPP code for each GTIN level? That is, if there's if there's an each and a case size for a product, should there be a different CTPP code for each level? Um, and if you are tendering the case size, do you use the CTPP code at the each size? Um, no. So the CTPP code really um, is 
it, it relates to the base unit or each jitin. So um, it, it, we, we, we don't, um, because we're drawing a link between two things that are identical or, or, or very or very similarly defined, we, we, it, we can't, um, the base unit jitin means the same thing as the AMT CTPP concept. Therefore, the mapping or the link is drawn between those two things. Um, we can't really draw um, um, a link between a CTPP to a case, even though they're, they're not identical things. So um, in terms of tendering the case size, um, I think you'll probably need to um, speak to HPV around the CTPP codes. Um, I think it's um, you, you, you probably do use the same CTPP code for the case size, but I but I think you'll need to actually speak to the to HPV to get specific details. But the actual link itself is drawn between the base GTIN and the CTPP. Okay, I've just got a <laughs> I've just got a statement to say that HPV will need the CTPP code at any level of tender. Thank you for that. <laughs> Um, but the specific link is between the base unit and CTPP. Um, okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, the um, There's a couple more things to talk about. Oh, I've got another, I've got another question from Amy. Um, is the CTPP to GTIN map expected to be one to one? Um, in my experience, it can be one to many and many to one. How will this be managed? Um, many to one scenario is not consistent with just one standard, but has occurred in my experience. Um, we haven't actually, so right at this point, we've done a proof of concept with Alpha Farm. So one, one company has done, completed their CTPP code, um, codes and uploaded onto the NPC, so we don't actually have a full data set to actually look at yet, Amy. Um, but you're right, I think, I think in, I think the ideal situation would have been one to one, but in reality, we do see one many to many. So I think we'll, um, we'll just have to manage that and have a look at why that is in terms of data quality, etc. when we get the full data set. So ideal doesn't equal to uh, reality in, in some cases. Cool. Thanks, Amy. Um, so there's a couple more things I want to talk about the initiative um, before we go on to requirements for uh, pharmaceutical suppliers. Um, one is that if you already got CTPP data from the HPV tender application process, you're very welcome to just reuse those CTPP codes. So that's fine. It doesn't matter which way um, you get the CTPP codes. Um, we, we don't. We don't really mind. It's the if it's the same data, it's it's it can be reused. So that that's the first point. The second point is some people, when you um, submit new PBAC submissions for for new products to be reimbursed, um, you may have included um, the AMT forms as well, where the AMT team will return to you. Um, the various descriptions of the seven of the, of the seven boxes of seven product concepts. Um, one of them will be the CTPP concept, and sometimes um, what's returned to you on those AMT forms are both the descriptions and the and the codes. So, which means that you probably also have access to some CTPP codes from this new PBAC submission process. Again, if you actually have those codes, you're welcome to reuse those. Um, in the um, in this particular initiative, um, another point I want to make is that um, there are already um, stakeholders within Australia that are really really quite interested in this link data um, that that would already um, have been asking um, to, to 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 get this data the, this link to be created and this includes jurisdictions and pharmacy vendors so um, we already have identified um, stakeholders um, and organizations out there who, who who really want to use this data 
Okay, so um, any other questions on this, on the past section? Otherwise, I'll just move on to requirements for pharma, pharma suppliers. Okay. Okay, so in terms of for pharmaceutical suppliers and um, in the requirements for this particular project or initiative, um, this really only is relevant for uh, suppliers who have medicines for human use um, and also um, also people having an NPC catalog, so an, an actual member of the National Product Catalog. Um, so for you guys, um, um, your first step is to attend um, the detailed webinars um, to be scheduled next month. Um, so look out for those for those invites. Um, in in those detailed webinars, we will be um, or, or prior to those webinars or around the same time, we will be providing to you a document pack, and that document pack will include a letter explaining the purpose of the initiative. Um, so a little bit more information um, beyond what what we've spoken about um, at today's webinar. We'll, given you, we'll give you a guide that explains the step-by-step -step process. So really, how, how would you go and find um, new CTPP codes for, for new products that we don't know about? Or how would you validate the, the CTPP codes that we would have given you um, um, that's already linked to your product, et cetera? Um, and a spreadsheet would be uh, given to you specifically for you um, that will contain a map between your products. So we'll we'll have the JTIN, your base your base unit JTINs will be the primary identifier in this spreadsheet, um, and we'll have a map or or an associated CTPP codes given to you already. So the idea is you would validate that um, using um, a browser called a Shrimp terminology browser. So the Shrimp browser is a freely available um, browser um, on the internet, um, and it's um, actually owned by the CSIRO. Um, what it's, a, it's quite a simple tool for you to search. Um, you just um, put in some search terms for a medicine, and then you, you, you'll find the, um, um, a selection of CTPP codes that match that particular text, and then you basically search for your medicine and find the CTPP code. For your for each product, um, so the idea is that you would validate all the CTPP codes that's provided by us um, in that particular spreadsheet. Now we may or may not have access to all the data, so we um, um, the mapping spreadsheet would have been done um, based on last month's data. So we we should have most of the stuff. Um, but we may not have everything. So the idea is that you'll need to validate each, um, each CTPP code link uh, linked to your product. Um, so the next step then is to then capture those, um, the CTPP codes for products not included in that spreadsheet. So um, for example, um, if you think that your a, a particular product um, is not found in the AMT, so you, can't, you, you searched for it and you can't find it, and, and it's actually in scope of the AMT, then you send a request submission to the agency. Um, so the request submission can be, it's a, is an online form that, um, that we will give you more details on in the next webinar. Um, and then once you've got everything validated, um, you've up, you'll upload that, that data into the NPC uh, by populating the AMT container trade product pack code field. Um, so this particular field, as I said before, is not mandatory. Um, so it actually can be left empty. Um, in terms of uploading, um, this would obviously be based on your currently existing upload process already. So you may actually be doing this yourself, or you could already um, you you may be relying on um, some NPC certified product providers. Um, so speak speak to your product providers. Um, around this, or if you're not sure, please contact GS1 for, for further details around the, um, the upload process. And then finally, just ensure that all future products that are added to the NPC um, will have their respective CTPP code. So search through Shrimp again for any products in the future that, that, you, um, that you introduce to the market. 
um, um, grab their CTPP codes from Shrimp again, um, and then upload those um, into the NPC over time. Um, and then also over time, you may receive notifications of missing or inaccurate or inactive CTPP codes. Um, so um, we do sometimes inactivate um, some of those codes um, due to some some reason. So a, a change in TGA data, for example, is a is a good reason um, for some of those inactivations. So over time, GS1 or the agency might be sending you some um, emails or some around uh, the data quality reports. Um, so the NPC um, data quality reports initiative um, um, is also something that. Um, we will talk about in the next webinar. Okay, so that was next steps for pharma, pharma suppliers, but the next steps for us, for the agency, um, is to schedule the detailed webinars um, around May, um, early to mid-May um, next month um, to explain the process um, and also send um, all suppliers um, a documentation pack, as I said before, with those with those four, four collaterals. Um, okay, so, and that was my last slide. Um, I do have a question here. Um, when do you anticipate the document pack will be released? Um, we are receiving validation errors when the CTPP is not listed in the NPC for GTINs with GPC code of one zero 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 five eight four five pharmaceutical products. How do you apply for a new CTPP code? Um, the document packs will start to be sent out um, when we uh, schedule those webinars. So obviously we're we're dealing with over a hundred um, organisations here. So we um, we will sequentially send them out. Um, um, when we um, when when we do the webinars, and also we'll also um, do a one-on-one -on -one, um, with most of you guys to help you through your your particular spreadsheet. Also, so just try to try to um, to so wait wait for the second um, webinar to be scheduled. But otherwise, to apply for a new CTPP code, um, um, you you just um, well, first of all, you'll need to find out um, if that CTPP code actually exists or not in within the AMT. Now, you can do a couple of things um, from a tendering, from a HPV tendering perspective. What we've done in the past is we've provided people with a list, with a spreadsheet, essentially, of uh, a list of all the CTPPs or active CTPPs within the AMT, and you can actually search through that. And if you don't find your product um, within that list, send then send um, an email um, either to help at digitalhealth.gov.au or actually click on find our online submission uh, request submission form um, on our website to actually um, request that product to be added. Um, so what I recommend is for you to actually just send us the send us a ticket. So just um, just send an email to help at digitalhealth.gov.au and we can um, we can progress um, that with you specifically. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so Amy, I think we've unmuted everyone now so um, but I can see um, a question on the chat um, from Amy and I'll, I'll read that first so what will the what will be the validation process who will be responsible for ensuring the accuracy of the GTN CTPP map and how can vendors and clinicians be assured with the accuracy of the data no so so what we've done with this initiative is that we have actually done the draft mappings for most organizations um, I can't say we've done it for all. Obviously, we, we, we may not be privy to all the latest data sets, but what we've done is we've done the bulk of the draft mapping, so a map between um, the CTPPs and, uh, and all the products that we can find um, within the, the NPC um, uh, data set that have been provided to us from last month. 
So um, um, the suppliers themselves would be uh, receiving that spreadsheet, and then really this is a supplier-led um, initiative also because the data really belongs to them, um, and the, the idea is that they validate each row and make sure that that CTPP data is is um, is correct. Essentially, saying the CTPP product that we have uh, associated or linked to that particular product or GTIN is correct. It's the same product, um, so it is a supplier-led, um, uh, I guess, piece of work in terms of validating the actual data itself. Um, so once, obviously, once it goes on to the NPC um, over time, um, as I mentioned before, um, we have put in place a series of reports that are run monthly um, that we provide to, to GS1 um, around their data quality reports. Um, so there's, there's, there's three. So one about um, checking the inactive, um, checking whether a code is there or, or, or whether it's um, there's been uh, transcription errors, and then one about if if there are inactive uh, concepts, what what has been replaced, what will replace them, and then sometimes there there are no replacements. So we we, we have a data quality uh, report program to actually monitor the data quality of that of that map. Um, okay, so everyone is actually unmuted now. So um, there's a couple more minutes in the webinar. Do we? Do we have any other questions from anyone, either verbally asking or on the chat? Uh, one thing I would also say that I've actually probably forgot in the webinar is that this this work really is relevant for pharmaceutical suppliers only and manufacturers um, and, and not wholesalers um, at this point. Um, so I want to make that clear. Okay, Amy, um, are there any plans to include barcodes at a TPUU level to support the use case of barcode scanning at a point where medicine is administered to a patient by a nurse in a hospital? Um, yes, so the mapping, the mapping, a particular mapping can be done between um, um, the unit of use um, barcode level if one exists. Um, to the AMT TPU level, so the, the 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 linking itself doesn't actually need to just sit on the CTPP base unit GTIN level. Um, also, um, if we receive or, or or if the sponsors indeed um, actually assign unit of use barcodes at that particular level at the at the unit dose level, um, we, we we certainly would recommend that people then do that mapping to the. Um, um, the AMT TPU concepts instead. Now we don't, we haven't actually seen that widely in the industry yet, um, but technically, yes, that 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 can exist. Okay, um, great. Um, I think we've just run run about run out of time. Um, can I um, just? Um, uh, just say uh, uh, keep a lookout for the uh, an invite for the detailed webinar for for May. Um, um, you guys also already have access to the presentation slides um, that's been delivered today. And um, if you have any other questions for the time being, just send an email to help at digitalhealth.gov.au, and we'll be happy to uh, to answer any of your questions. Um, thank you for your time and um, have a good day.